Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about tumor lysis syndrome. As the name itself indicates that the tumor lysis syndrome, some tumor cells have been lysed that lead to a number of abnormalities and that collectively forms the syndrome and that's what the tumor lysis syndrome is. So what generally happens if there is a tumor and most commonly the tumor is of cellular origin okay hematological origin that can be leukemia that can be lymphoma uh, high grade uh, non hodgkins lymphoma in particular the burkitt's lymphoma so these are certain uh, tumors in which tumor lysis syndrome is most specifically seen so what generally happens if someone has the tumor so then there will be chemotherapy right and if there is uh, they are undergoing the chemotherapy then there are chances of the lysis of the tumor cells and due to that lysis there will be some metabolites which will be released into the blood directly and that can lead to abnormal changes in the uh, whole metabolism of or whole metabolic uh, components of the blood and that particular thing is known as the tumor lysis syndrome so i'll just try to uh, give a brief idea so suppose you are giving the chemotherapy to some of the chemotherapy to the tumor right to the patient so some of the tumor cells will be lysed right and there will be tetrad of abnormalities when i say tetrad of abnormalities it means there will be certain things that will be in higher amount that is the hyper that can cause hyper uricemia that can cause hyper phosphatemia and that can also lead to hyper kalemia right and there will be decrease in the circulating calcium in the blood that is hypocalcemia and this is the tetrad of abnormalities that is seen in the tumor lysis syndrome and it is very important for your exam also let's come to the tumor lysis syndrome it is a group of metabolic abnormalities that can occur as a complication during the treatment of the carcinoma so due to lysis what will be happening uh, due to lysis of the large number of cells the intracellular contents will be entering the blood stream in large quantities and thus they can alter the physiologic ion concentration in plasma so what generally happens the homeostasis of body is altered due to a lot of uh, newer intracellular contents and their breakdown that comes to the blood stream so this can become a medical emergency basically it is an oncogenic emergency okay and it is most commonly seen after the treatment of certain blood disease that is lymphoma leukemia and high grade when i say leukemia and lymphomas high grade known hodgkin's lymphomas are also associated with this particular syndrome so high grade known hodgkin's lymphoma more particularly the burkitt's lymphoma is associated with tumor lysis syndrome now let's see the pathophysiology or the whole concept behind that the whenever there is a lymphoma especially the hematologic origin lymphoma so what generally happens uh, there will be cellular breakdown so after the chemotherapy after one to five days there will be breakdown of a lot of cells and there will be breakdown of the intracellular matrix like dna breakdown the protein breakdown and the cytosol breakdown so dna of course it is made up of a lot of uric acid so that will be leading to hyperuricemia then protein breakdown will further lead to the hyperphosphatemia and there will be cytosol breakdown that will lead to hyperkalemia and remember in renal flow also always uh, calcium is exchanged with potassium so if there is more reabsorption of potassium then that means the calcium is being lost and that's the reason we have hypocalcemia and this is ours in your exam also okay so what will happen there will be dna breakdown there will be hyperuricemia hyperphosphatemia there will be hypercalcemia due to hyper phosphatemia there will be hypocalcemia i'll repeat it will be hypocalcemia not hypercalcemia and then there will be hyperkalemia and all these will be leading to renal failure and when there is increased amount of potassium we know there will be 
प्रॉब्लम इन द कंडक्शन ऑफ एस एनोड और दैट विल लीड टू कार्डियक डिसरिदमियाज एंड न्यूरोमस्कुलर इरिटेबिलिटीज ऑल्सो नाउ अगेन एम्फोसाइजिंग ऑन द वेरियस मेटाबोलिक्स डिसफंक्शन और वेरियस बायोकेमिकल चेंजेस दैट अकर्स इन टी एल एस दैट इज ट्यूमर लाइसिस सिंड्रोम ऑफकोर्स हाइपर कैलेमिया हाइपर फोस्फेटेमिया हाइपर यूरिसमिया एंड हाइपो कैल्सीमिया वी आर डिस्कसिंग दीज फोर थिंग्स अगेन एंड अगेन बिकॉज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम एंड हैज बीन आज मल्टीपल टाइम्स इन द एग्जाम सो ऑल्सो नाउ देर विल बी इंक्रीज इन बी यू एन दैट इज ब्लड यूरिया नाइट्रोजन एंड देर विल बी साइंस ऑफ एजोटेमिया वट इज एजोटेमिया वेन नाइट्रोजन कंटेनिंग कंपाउंड्स इंक्रीज इज इन द ब्लड दैट इज नोन एज एजोटेमिया देर कैन बी रिलीज ऑफ साइटोकाइंस दैट कैन कॉज एस आई आर एस दैट इज सिस्टमिक इन्फ्लामेटरी रेस्पॉन्स सिंड्रोम and other multi organ failure can also occur due to this uh, disbalance in the homeostasis of the body when it comes to the signs and symptoms of the tumor lysis syndrome uh, we always focus on the ionic disbalances that is the hypocalcemia because this hypocalcemia is life threatening so majority of the uh, symptoms will be due to the hypocalcemia the hypocalcemia the type of imbalance we see the hypocalcemia is most important to ponder upon to focus upon because due to this hypocalcemia there is endangerment to the life also right so of course there can be nausea and vomiting and there can be lactic acidosis why lactic acidosis is there because there is change in the homeostasis and the whole metabolism is going to change and that will be requiring more functioning of the body right and that will be requiring more and more oxygen for functioning uh, for the metabolic high demand and that leads to the lactic acidosis because we need massive metabolic oxygen demand for this so the signs which are due to the calcium deficiency of course we know that tetany and the myopathy will be there due to the decrease in calcium in the blood then there can be sudden mental incapacity the parkinsonism the extra pyramidal movement disorders and the papillary edema can also seen due to the decrease uh, levels of the circulating calcium in the body now increase in phosphates and the uric acid can also lead to certain dysfunctions uh, though the hyperkalemia as we know increased potassium will be leading to cardiac arrhythmias and severe muscle weakness while signs due to the hyperphosphatemia are majorly on the renal or the kidney right so that will be causing the renal failure due to excess of the uric acids and nephrolithiasis and when there is renal injury due to uh, tumor lysis syndrome it is known as acute uric acid nephropathy so sometimes in your question you will be giving you will be given a u a n so you should understand that this is the renal injury that is caused due to the tls right now let's discuss certain uh, meritus prep fact so uh, of course you would be wanting to know how you will be diagnosing this tumor lysis syndrome because there are a lot of people who go uh, chemotherapy for leukemias for lymphomas so how you would be uh, determining whether the person has suffered from tls so kero and bishop gave a classification for that uh, in 2004 of course the year is not important but the classification is so there will be two types of classification one is the laboratory classification or laboratory diagnosis and second will be the clinical tumor lysis syndrome so uh, they classify tls into two varieties one is the laboratory variety that is laboratory tls and the clinical tls so what is this laboratory tumor lysis syndrome so of course it involves laboratory findings and what it want to know of course it will be wanting to know the level of calcium the level of potassium the level of uric acid and the level of other uh, metabolic syndromes the potassium and phosphate whatever right so uh it is defined as the abnormality in two or more of the following okay that occurs within 3 to 7 days after the chemotherapy so what are the various criteria for uric acid it should be 8 mg per deciliter or 25% increase potassium more than 6 uh, or 25% increase phosphate 4.5 uh, mg per deciliter or 25% increase and corrected calcium should be less then 7 mg per deciliter or 25% decrease should be there okay so these are the criteria so out of these four if you find two or more then you will be uh, saying that this is a positive laboratory tls right now the second criteria is the clinical tls so for uh, fulfilling the clinical uh, tri tls cr criteria you have to 
uh, have the laboratory criteria positive that means uh, two or more values should be above the defined values which we have just discussed right so uh, one more symptoms along with the laboratory diagnosis or laboratory tls one more symptom if it is there either it is increased serum creatinine that is more than 1.5 times ab above the normal limit or seizures are there or cardiac arrhythmias are there or sudden death so the out of these four if you get one symptom there right that will qualify your clinical tumor uh, lysis syndrome right now howard later redefined the Cairo and Bishop uh, criteria and he removed the 25% rule and said that only symptomatic hypocalcemia should constitute the TLS. So as we know hypocalcemia is the major reason and it is the reason for death also that's why it is given so much importance in even the diagnosis also. So if there is hypocalcemia and that is symptomatic that should constitute the TLS. And it was also advised by them that uh, two or more serum electrolytes should be outside the normal range to qualify for the TLS. Now the prevention of the TLS. So how you'll be preventing the TLS? So as we know, there will be more uh, uric acid, right? So how to control that uric acid? So either you can uh, administer certain uh, uric acid inhibitors like allopurinol. Now if you are using this, it will be inhibiting the uric acid production. And you can also alternatively use the resburicase. Now we also know there is increased uh, lactic acidosis, right? And there are chances of the metabolic acidosis also but still alkalization of urine using acetazolamide or the sodium bicarbonate is controversial uh, some say that can be administered some say it cannot be administered but alkalization beyond 7 ph is not indicated in tls let's see the various step at which these medication work and how the whole process go ahead so as we know uh, the progression of the whole process uh, there will be tumor cell lysis most of these cells will be of hematological uh, origin right now what will happen due to the lysis there will be release of dna as well as cytosol will be there we know uh, there are two components one is nucleus and another is cytosol so the cytosol will lead to hyperkalemia and there will be release of dna now dna is made up of either pyrimidines or the purines so the purines okay and the phosphorus will be detached from the dna now if, when purine is detached that will be converted into hypoxanthine or xanthine and that will lead to formation of uric acid by an enzyme known as xanthine oxidase now this xanthine oxidase which converts the hypoxanthine or xanthine into uric acid can be inhibited by allopurinol so you can administer allopurinol to check on the increasing uric acid formation in the blood right then this uric acid later converts into allantoin right so this allantoin has high urinary excretion although the uric acid has low urinary excretion so you don't want a lot of uh, uh, this uh, uric acid in your body then what you can do you can uh, administer allopurinol now this uric acid can be converted into the allantoin now that is done by uricase okay now rasburicase can inhibit this uh, can sorry uh, not inhibit but that can potentiate this uricase to convert the uric acid into allantoin so we know that this has low urinary excretion but the allantoin has high urinary excretion that's how it will be uh, washed out from the body and the problem of hyperuricemia will be solved so there are two treatment modalities which we can give to control the increasing uric acid inside the body now coming to the second aspect uh, due to the breakdown of the dna the phosphorus was released that lead to hyperphosphatemia and we know whenever there is hyperphosphatemia there has to be increased excretion of the calcium from the kidney right so this is a concept you have to remember this forever right so there will be calcium phosphate precipitation and this will lead to hypocalcemia because uh, more calcium will be taken out of the uh, through the kidney of the body and phosphorus will be reabsorbed right so that can lead to urate nephropathy due to the uric acid okay again very important concept here urate nephropathy is caused by uric acid and calcium phosphate nephropathy is caused by phosphorus or calcium and phosphorus precipitation right so low urine ph is seen when there is nephropathy with urate and 
calcium phosphate nephropathy shows high urine ph so this is the basic difference between the nephropathy caused by two different metabolites of the tumor lysis syndrome let's discuss certain frequently asked question based on this topic so the first uh, question here is ionic disbalance seen in tumor lysis syndrome so we have been talking about this particular ionic disbalance in the whole video so this is easy but it is very important so there will be increase in plasma concentration of uric acid so known as hyperuricemia hyperphosphatemia will be there and hyperkalemia will be there so these three and the calcium will decrease in the blood right so the plasma levels of the calcium will uh, decrease so there will be hypocalcemia so this is very important now the next question we have is tumor lysis is most commonly associated with as we know the tumor lysis syndrome is most commonly associated with those tumors which involves the hemopoietic system or the uh, hematologic uh, uh, origin right so those can be lymphomas then we have leukemias right and in lymphomas also uh, you will have uh, non hodgkins one high grade non hodgkins lymphoma particularly burkitt's lymphoma so these are the common tumors which are associated with the tumor lysis syndrome now next question we have is the method of prevention of the tumor lysis syndrome so how the prevention can be done uh, for hyperuricemia we have just discussed it we can use the allopurinol and that basically inhibits the xanthine oxidase okay so it stops the conversion of the xanthine into the uric acid so we know that dna has been break, broken down the purines are converted to xanthine then xanthine will be converted to the uric acid in presence of uh, enzyme known as xanthine oxidase okay xanthine oxidase then this xanthine oxidase can further uh, like be converted into uric acid and then this uric acid which is formed is not that much soluble in water that it can be excreted out through the kidney so what happens that has to be changed okay and you have to change this uric acid into allantoin uric acid has to be changed into allantoin so that this particular product is more soluble in water and can be easily excreted out from the kidney so there is a enzyme known as uricase now this uricase is potentiated by remember it is potentiated by a drug known as rasburicase okay so this is the treatment methodology we can use now another way we can also use, uh, consider is uh, like uh, certain sodium bicarbonate to alkalinize the urine but that's controversial right so we have to make sure that the ph should not rise more than 7 if you are uh, using some alkalizing agent also 